I'm Johannes Haile Selassie, um, Curator of Physical Anthropology here at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Uh, we're here today to talk about um, an early human ancestor partial skeleton that was found in the um, Woranzo Mille uh, paleontological study area in Ethiopia. Uh, it is a partial skeleton that we found uh, beginning in 2005. Um, excavation of this partial skeleton was finished in 2009. We recovered um, a number of skeletal elements of this uh, individual. Uh, the discovery started with um, a small fragment of the lower arm bone, uh, or the ulna, and uh, that ulna led us to um, looking for more pieces of this individual, because what we found at the beginning was just the uh, proximal half of this um, uh, arm bone, lower arm bone, and further, um, search in the area produced more pieces of the shaft and uh, we also found while we were finding this we also found some uh, bones of the neck uh, and also some fragments of other elements so that led us to um, a major excavation which uh, took uh, about five years. The age of this partial skeleton is 3.6 million years. Uh, we nicknamed this specimen Kadanumu uh, which is um, a phrase taken from the Afar language, uh, which is um, the language of the people we work with in the Afar region. And um, it's composed of two words, two Afar words, meaning kada and numu, uh, which means big and guy or man. And that's to reflect the size of this individual, because what we had known from Lucy before is that she's such a tiny female individual. And compared to this huge individual, um, I th we think he deserves, of course it's a male, we, deserves, we, de we, we think that he deserves a nickname, uh, big guy, which is Kadanumu. What we're seeing here is that this individual, by looking at his hip bones and his shoulder joints, his, his leg bones, is that he had the ability to walk bipedally like modern humans, almost like modern humans. So what it, it tells us is that all our understanding of Lucy's species movement and locomotion was wrong because all we depended on was on Lucy. The fact that she was small, she was a female, had a lot of impact on the way we thought about how long leg bones of Afarensis could be, how, you know, how advanced they could be in terms of their um, hip bone morphology. So this guy has a combination of all the characters that we really expect in finding you know, in a fully bipedal uh, individual. So he tells us that Lucy's species of Australopithecus afarensis was totally fully bipedal, as much as we are today. So the notion of her Lucy's species being, you know, weirdly walking on two legs when on the ground is sort of falsified technically uh, by this uh, large individual. Here we have an individual who is much larger than Lucy. Not only is he much larger than Lucy, but he also has elements that were not known for Lucy. For example, the clavicle, which is the collarbone. This is the most complete collarbone that has ever been found in the human fossil record. And in addition to the collarbone, we have the shoulder blade, which is one of the most complete shoulder blades ever found in the fossil record. Now, what did we know about the shoulder blade morphology of Lucy? Now, if we look at what we know, what we knew from Lucy, which I have a specimen of here, that's Lucy's scapula. This is all we had from Lucy. Now, that's part of you know the what we call the glenoid posa. This is where the uh, upper arm rests on the uh, shoulder blade, and size-wise, you can actually see how different they are. This is so tiny. So everything that we tried to interpret on the shoulder morphology of Australopithecus afarensis was based on this piece which is one, very tiny, very small, and secondly, it doesn't have as much information as we want to understand the morphology of the shoulder girdle and also the joints with uh, the upper arm. So here we have a complete scapula, which tells us a lot about what it looks like because people based on this one has interpreted this to be more ape-like than human-like. But when you look at uh, a lot of smaller modern human individuals, we were actually able to match this with a modern human. In the old days, we always thought that the elongation of our legs 
came later in our evolution, probably with the advent of the genus Homo, which is our, our own genus. And that's because we, like apes, the belief was that our arms were still much longer and our legs were shorter. And that's exactly the impression that Lucy gave us. Because Lucy, because she's tiny, her legs are also tiny. But the whole point is, if, if you had to let, if he, if he made Lucy as big as this individual, her legs would also be long. 